When I was praying this morning, I was just reminded that today is the day that the Lord has made. Today is the day that we are all alive and well. We have two legs, a lot of us. We have two arms, a lot of us. There are things to be grateful for in spite of all the, the challenges and the circumstances. There is a God that is truth and that is good. 
just spite of all of the, the lies and the misdirections that are out there at play at the moment. There is a God that calls us to unity, despite of all of the division. There is a God that calls us to serve Him wholeheartedly, despite of the ways of this world that tell us it's about us. And today we are able to gather here as a small group and we are able to live stream to many people and we are able to still come together as a body. And when I was thinking on this and when I was praying about this, I was reminded that God is in control and that we have nothing to fear. COVID is uncertain and these times are uncertain and restrictions and masks and all this stuff is inconvenient. But it is not impossible for us to still serve God and serve one another. It is not impossible for God to still work His plan and purpose for all things. That is good and it is worth us praising Him and acknowledging Him through everything. Praising His name because He is good. Acknowledging Him because He is God. And just submitting ourselves under His authority because there is no other way. So this morning I just wanted to encourage us that as we come together today, rejoice for this is the day in which the Lord has made. Be glad when there is trials and temptations or if persecution arises for His name's sake. For there is a great reward that awaits us. But also be reminded that we are a body, that we are chosen, that we are in the palm of His hands, that there is a spirit with us that is greater than the spirit of this world and that we are here, we are alive, and that we can worship and praise Him, however that looks today. So if you need to listen for His voice, then listen for His voice. If you are fasting today to seek Him, then seek Him with your whole heart. And if you are if you are on the live stream and wherever you are, then do what you can do in your perimeters. But let's, let's worship God this morning. So God, I thank you for this day. I praise your name, for you are King of kings and you are Lord of lords. We thank you for this roof and this place that we are collecting in. God, we thank you for each and every person that is here brought uniquely with their own gifts and their own talents and their own abilities that you have hand woven, God. We thank you for your plan and your purpose that prevails in all circumstances and situations. We thank you, God, that you build and develop your church and that, God, you are still in control. So, Father, we bring this day before you and we ask, God, that Holy Spirit, you would be with us this morning in power and in truth. Let your spirit dwell amongst your people, we pray in the name of Jesus. Let us seek you and worship you in spirit and in truth today, God. Let us be reminded that you are the God in whom all things are created through and for. And that, Lord, we can trust in you. Father, thank you. Thank you for the breath in our lungs today. Thank you for the opportunity to come together. Do your thing, God, we pray. Hide each and every person today behind your cross. Fill our mouths with your words, with your praise. Let our hearts acknowledge who you are. Let this not be about us, God, but let this be about you. We seek you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Emma, could I just encourage you, please, just to pray for... Um, people that are serving today in every capacity. Thanks, Emma. to receive his peace right now. The presence of our God is here. Even though we may not understand it, it is our portion.
Last week or the week before when we did testimonies, um, there was a report that someone was reached via the, the, uh, the Zoom, the online, who doesn't actually watch this church and it was very random and he was touched by something that was spoken. So Samuel, can I please ask that you would just commit the online, the Zoom, the live stream into God's hands that it's going to reach people and it's going to reach people beyond what we could even perceive. Thanks. Alpha, is that right? Yep. So, Jack, did you want to pray for Alpha?
Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Riverland Central Church. Great to have you with us today on the live stream as well as here live in minimal numbers. Now, just a quick reminder, with the restrictions, we're not allowed to sing. Uh, however, that doesn't mean you can't worship. So use anything else you like, your arms, your legs, move your body to worship God this morning. How good is our God? Yes. that you don't leave us, you are with us. And no matter what, we can run to you. We can run to you whenever there's trouble, whenever there's strife, whenever we just need a hug. God, we can run to you. You are so good. You are so good. Well, welcome everybody to church this morning. Thank you for tuning in on the live stream. We're so glad that you could join us. Let's just continue to worship and praise our God this morning. We're going to sing Running to the Light because that's what we want to do. We're going to be running to our God. We want to be running to our God, running to His feet, running to grab hold of Him. Any little bit, grabbing to grab hold of Him this morning. Why don't you join me? You can have my ass with no exception. I'm laying down my right to second guessing. You can have my yes Giving you my fear of never knowing Whatever's coming next, I know you've got me You can have my yes You're the lamp, you're the light, you're the cloud that guides me You're the way, you're the truth, you're the life inside of me
want to wrap you up, wrap you up, and never let you go. You know it's us that walks away from God, not God that walks away from us, right? God is always there. The open arms are always there. No matter what you're going through, no matter what's happening, you can always, always turn back to God. He's never going to be there with a stick going up. That's it. You've, 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 You've gone too far and now you need some repercussions from me. God is there with open arms saying, just come, let me love you. Let me love you. Yes, there might be some consequences, earthly consequences for choices that we make. But God is full of love, forgiveness, grace. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. God, help us to make you the center, the center of every choice the center of every decision, every feeling that we have. God, help me to make you the center of my life. Continue to make me make that choice every day. Every day that is a choice. It's not a one-time thing. Every time we have a choice to make, it is our choice to put you first and to, to put it past you first, God. Is this really what you want for my life?
Jesus be the center of my life. Jesus be the center of my life. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus.
Thank you, Lord God. You are so good. You are so good. You are so good. You know, and, and that's exactly right. You know, it's, it's all about Jesus. You know, we're here today in, in this building. You guys at home, you know, you guys at home, you don't have to wear a mask. And some people go, yeah, that's great. But it's all about Jesus, really. It doesn't matter what's going on. Jesus is still here. You know, like, we had, you know, two acoustic guitars and a drum kit and a singer, like, I still had a really good worship. I don't know about you guys. You know, you guys here, this is great. You guys at home, I hope you did too, because um, I did. And, you know, actually masks suit me because you can't see my face and it does. people don't go, you look sad. It's great. This is fantastic. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's all about Jesus. And, you know, as, as joking as that sounds, it's sort of a reflection of, you know, what's going on in here for me too, which... which sort of brings me to a conversation that we had last night. You know, we had a really, really interesting and, and fruitful and thoughtful conversation, you know, with, with five of us, and it was fantastic. And I just want to read something to you here from 1 Corinthians along the lines of the communion stuff. For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. This is Paul speaking. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We hear that pretty often. And in the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. How often have you heard those words? How often has that been said? You know, if you're at a traditional church, a Catholic church, a Lutheran church, speak from experience, you know, Lutheran church, you're up there, have the wafer, have the sip of wine, get up, the next person does it. But there's actually a piece after that that Paul writes about. So anyone who eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily, unworthily, is guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. You need to bring your stuff to God when you do this. That is why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. For if you eat the bread or drink the cup without honouring the body of Christ, you are eating and drinking God's judgement upon yourself. That is why many of you are weak and sick and some have even died. That's a pretty powerful statement. But if we would examine ourselves, we would not be judged by God in this way. Yet when we are being judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned along with the world. So when we have our, have our element, our communion, yes, we can take the bread and we can drink, drink the juice and we can think, yes, God's died for us. But Paul's written very clearly, you need to bring your stuff and surrender as well. So... For those of you here in the room, for those of you on the live stream even, as we take this, bring our stuff, bring bolts, our failures, everything, put them at his feet because he's died for us and like if you don't say, here it is, well, we're sort of unworthy. So, in your time, have your bread or your biscuit or whatever you've got Thank you, Lord, that we can come here and we can do communion. Communion is not a thing for every Sunday. We do this just for remembering you. We can do this anytime. But, Lord, when we do this, give us open ears, open hearts to examine ourselves. And if there's a hard spot or something, let us lay that down before you, Lord. As we take this bread, let us surrender ourselves. As we, as we take the cup of juice or water or whatever you might have at home. Thank you, Father, that you have died for us and that you've died for us and your blood covers us. 
And Lord, I pray that we not only remember that, but we can do our part and come to you and acknowledge that and let's actually give our stuff to you. Because it was a huge sacrifice. Let us not get complacent about it. Take your juice or your water. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, God, that what you've done for us, sending your son so that we can spend eternity with you, so we can be in relationship with you. It is actually really fitting. The next song we're going to sing is Christ is Enough. Christ is enough for me. He's enough to get you through whatever you're going through. He's enough to, to help get you um, to the next level if you're, you're, you're struggling to, um, to get to um, your next dream to your next goal he's there to help pump you up and to go he's enough we don't need things of this world we need him God fill me with more of you fill me with more of you you are my reward God help me to give you all the devotion that I can thank you Jesus
for your faithfulness. We want to thank you that you call us to follow you and that you you don't just call us and then, you know, leave us to sort of trail along after you like a, you know, bawling two-year-old, but you you call us and then walk with us. You call us to follow you and, and then walk with us. You come and live in us. Jesus, we are in you and you are in us. That's an incredible mystery, an incredible truth. We thank you for it, Lord. And this morning, we just want to say we follow you. We love you. We're we're coming after you. We're focusing our attention on you. Draw us to yourself as we come to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Amen, amen, amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, those who are here. Good morning, those at home. It's great to have you with us. You may take your spots. Thank you so much to the band. You've been wonderful. It's so good to have somebody else singing when we can't. That's a funny thing, isn't it? A strange thing, but it's a good thing that we still get to uh, still get to worship, however that might happen. So good morning, everybody. So good to have you with us. So good if you're here for the first time, if you're watching for the first time. My name's Joella. I'm one of the leaders here and it's great to have you with us. It's great to have you with us and welcome, welcome, welcome. For those of you who are here in the building, there will be coffee and uh, opportunity to to have a bit of a, a chat and to introduce yourself to a few people afterwards. So please stick around and stay with us for that. If you're at home, we just encourage you instead of... Uh, you know, just um, heading on out into the garden or whatever you're going to do next to just grab, jump on the phone and ring somebody else who you think might be at watching at home at their place and just, you know, have a virtual coffee with them. Enjoy their company as well. So this morning, I just want to tell you some of the things that are going on around the place. Even these strange times, we are still moving forward. There's still lots going on. So this Monday night, uh, tomorrow night, we have band practice. So the band will be meeting here, masks on, doing the thing, getting ready for the f- next few weeks. So that's going to be great. On Wednesday night, 7.30, uh, the, our equip group, Four Keys to Hearing God's Voice, continues. 
Uh, that's in a private home, so if you want to know more about that, have a chat with um, me or jump on the website afterwards and have, find out the contact details for that. Uh, on also on Wednesday night is our SOAK meeting. Now, that's a prayer meeting that is here in the building. It's a bit different to an everybody sit in the circle and, and pray type meeting. It's an opportunity to come and just soak in the presence of God. We have music playing. There is opportunity just to hang out with God. So come do that Wednesday, 7.30. On Friday night at 7 o'clock, there will be youth uh, here in the building, masks on, games to be played, fun to be had. So if uh, you're part of that, then please come along. Or if you know other people who want to be involved, then uh, get in contact with Daryl. Again, all the contact details are on the website. So jump on and have a little look at that. Now this week, this is exciting. This is something we've been planning for a little while. Our latest equip group is an alpha group. And that's starting today. Uh, today, delayed by one week, but starting today. Uh, so it's eight week course and it creates space and we're going to be doing that here in the building today. It might have to go online and if we do that, well, we do that. But uh, right now, today, it's here in the building, uh, creating a space for some conversation about who God is, about what this whole faith thing is about. Any question is okay in that kind of environment. It's even okay to say, I don't think I believe this stuff. Alpha is an opportunity to explore and to really look into what it's all about. If you're still interested in, in signing up for that, it's not too late. Uh, please speak to Dave. Please speak to Gail. And again, the numbers are all available uh, on the website if you're wanting to get in contact with one of them to uh, sign up for next week if you can't be here today. And finally, uh, coming up at the end of this month, the 28th and 29th of this month, is our Love Mercy Kingdom Conference. Now, I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, the theme is Love Mercy. And of course, that comes from the scripture in Micah chapter 6, verse 8, where uh, God tells us or says, the, this is what the Lord requires of you to do what is right, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. I love that, that we get to walk humbly, not just walk humbly, but humbly with. My favourite verse, my favourite word in that verse is the with, with God. We get to do those things with God. That's great. So we've got special guest Alison Troth from Destiny Rescue coming to speak to us on that weekend. There'll be two sessions on the Saturday afternoon and there'll be one on the Sunday morning. So that's going to be great. Pop it in your diaries now. Make sure you're free that weekend so you've got heaps of uh, energy to be part of that. Really good. There's a whole pile of other things going on around the place, some of them that you know about, some of them that get talked about publicly and some that don't. But I just want to celebrate and say thank you to some people today. Uh, one of the things I want to celebrate, now this it might seem very um, boring <laughs> and unexciting to some of you, but uh, yesterday was the due date for our annual audit. Uh, which involves uploading many, many documents, many, many photographs, all kinds of things. Yes, Dave thinks it's boring. But yesterday was the day. It all had to be done. It was our deadline. And I just want to say thank you to the people who participated in getting that all ready for us. Uh, I once heard somebody say that um, administration adds to ministry. And we don't get to do the fun, cool ministry stuff without the administration that goes on behind it. And so I just want to say thank you to those people who uh, learned new systems and ways of doing things to be able to do that. So I want to say, I've, I've actually got some um, chocolate here, but then I suddenly went, hang on a minute, people are praying and fasting. So if you would like me to hold your chocolate until for 21 days, because it's not going to be good for you to have that in the next 21 days, I'm happy to hang on to it. But I've got some uh, Kit Kat, so you can take a break. Some chocolate for uh, Chris Campbell. Hello, Chris, at home. Chris is uh, with us on the live stream today. Uh, he did, of course, all the finance section. And I want to say thank you to you, Chris. It's been a big job. So thank you for that. I want to say thank you to Sue, who looked after the risk uh, management and the work health and safety section. So thank you so much for that, Sue. Awesome stuff. I want to say a big thank you to Emma, who looked after our child protection section. Fabulous things. Emma has taken on leadership of our Child Safe program and all the whole um, working with children checks, the whole deal. And so I just want to say thank you to Emma for that and for her role in doing that this time round. Uh, Brian did a whole lot of the stuff that has to do with our building and our compliance with building. Many, many photos uploaded. And uh, Neil looks after our inventory. So he did all of that. And of course, there were some things that Dave and I did too. So thank you so much, everybody. Yay! <laughs> Audit is done for another year. No, that's good. Well done, everybody.
Uh, also, something that happened yesterday, a whole pile of people came and did the child safe training again and Emma taught that first time doing that on her own. So hands, head, hands off, heads off, hats off, hats off, masks off to Emma. No, and uh, no, 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 don't take your mask, leave your mask off, leave your mask off. Uh, no, that's good. So thank you, Emma, and thank you to those people who have signed up to be volunteers with the Kids Club program as well. That's going to launch in a, just a couple of weeks and I want to talk about that. Uh, this morning, Amanda's going to come join me now as well. You know, it's part of our dream, part of the purpose for us being here, in fact, a whole lot of the purpose for us being here is that we're here to make disciples um, of all nations, of all people, of all ages. And uh, that's really what our church exists for, love God, love people, connect the two. And that's all about making disciples. And sometimes we think about well, how we are disciples. We just sang that and about following Jesus and not turning back and all of that. But it's also about helping people who don't even know Jesus yet to become his disciples and to become his followers. And that's what the Kids Club is all about. You know, children following Jesus, children hearing about Jesus for the first time, perhaps for some of them, children who are understanding that God is good, that Jesus is not just a swear word, but is actually a, a, a somebody that they can know, that they can love, who they can walk with, who they can live in, who is life. I mean, how cool is that? So that's what this Kids Club is all about and uh, we're going to be praying for Amanda in particular and the launch of the Kids Club which will be happening within this 21 days. The first uh, day of prayer um, idea for, for today you will have, might have seen on social media, you might have received by text, you might have opened your page and seen today is pray for revival in the nation. Choose to believe for miracles and begin to create a prayer request list. Well, I want to invite you this morning to add to your prayer request list uh, that you would pray for the launch of the Kids Club, which will be happening uh, in the next few weeks. And so I just want to uh, ask you to begin praying for that now. Um, and uh, we're praying for Amanda, but she's just got a few things she wants to say as we kick off with that. That's awesome. Thank you, Joella. And it is everything that Joella said and, and more, I think, because when God is in something, there is so much more that we can't see. And it's very exciting. So just chatting with people yesterday after the training, um, everybody's ideas and everybody's thoughts that came together was, was just amazing because everyone has something unique to offer. And without that person, then something cannot be achieved without that person. So that is each one of you as well. We all have something very unique to offer that God has placed you here for, for a purpose. And it's very exciting to be able to think about creating a space that we can speak into young children's lives. We can connect with families. We can begin to shine the, the light of Christ and create a culture that is against the culture of this world. So we're going against the grain here and there's going to be push and there's going to be uh, things that come against that. So we are desperate for prayer. That's essential. Um, and I do ask if you don't want to volunteer in the program, can I ask you to pray? Pray for the program. Pray for the community. Pray for the families. Pray for the children. Pray for this church. Um, pray for the team members. Just pray. Just commit that to God um, because prayer goes a long way. And if you do want to be involved, please come and see me. Please come and see Joella. Um, get involved. There's, there's lots of things that you can do and it's a great opportunity and it's looking good. So thank you. Yep. Excellent. So we would like to pray for Amanda and the whole of the team today as they start. So I'm going to duck around this side. So we're, Dave, you can come and pray with us as well. That'd be great. And um, keeping my safe praying distance on, let's be praying for Amanda and for the, the whole team. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Father, I just want to thank you for this opportunity. God, it was a dream that uh, began, you know, quite some time ago, many, 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 many months ago. And we, we kind of gave up on it at one point, but then you brought us uh, Amanda to lead it. And we thank you for that, God. And we thank you for the journey that she's been on. We thank you for the way that you are shaping her and growing her. We thank you for the, the gift that she has become uh, to us, to the church, but also to uh, this program and to the families and the children that she'll be interacting with. God, we thank you for the team that you've wrapped around her. Uh, so the people that she will be um, encouraging and supporting and leading. God, we thank you for them and for the way that you are equipping and, and getting them ready for that as well. God, we pray for the kids. There are children in this community that you have already put your hand on and are drawing yeah. to be ready to come yeah. to this program. We trust that that is the case, God. We know that it is the case. And we, God, there are children in this community who you have already destined, you've already called to yourself, you don't even know your name yet. 
You've already called them to, to serve you in particular ways and to, to be have their lives completely transformed by your love and your grace. And we just call out to those children in the spirit and say, come, come to Jesus, come to Jesus. Allow Jesus to shine in your light and he will completely transform it. And so God, we just declare that you are a good God with good plans and we just soak in those plans right now and we commit to praying for your will to be done in the lives of these children through this program in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So begin telling everyone you know that this is going to be happening. It looks like the date to start will be the 18th of August. And so it's Wednesday afternoons after school time here in the building for kids primary school age. So tell people about it. We've got to, going to have flyers and all of that stuff. It'll be on the website by the end of the week. And so just be ready to be talking to anyone you come across with kids and say, get along to this. It's going to be great. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Amanda. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And now let's get our Bibles out. Let's get ready to hear from uh, Dave as he leads us in the Word. Thank you, God. Father, bless him, we pray in Jesus' name. Speak to us through your servant. Amen. Well, good morning. How are you? It is, it is good to see your smiling eyes. <laughs> I don't get to see your faces today. For some of you, you might be really relieved about that. Uh, for others, you're probably wishing I could be benefiting from the blessing of your face. Um, good morning to those of you as well who are in our overflow room. Good morning to those of you who are on the live stream. It is so good to have you with us in this way. Isn't it great that we live in this time and this age where if this thing's going to hit us, we have all of this kind of technology that we can do this with. So good. So good. Well, we are starting a new series this morning as we start this new month. And it, as it coincides with our Acts Global Church's 21 Days of Prayer and Fasting. And it's called Pray Like This. And we're taking a close look, a deep dive into the Lord's Prayer as it's found in Matthew chapter 6. Now, many people I know will know the Lord's Prayer. And if I asked you to um, start to recite it, a lot of people could start to recite it by rote. You know, the, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You could start to do that. We'd probably all start to stumble when we get to the forgive us our, oh, is it, is it trespasses or is it sins or what is it? We'd all start to stumble over that stuff. And then when we get to the, the end bit, does it finish? Where does it finish? Does it finish with... Thine is the glory, the kingdom, the power, and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Like, we, we all get a bit sort of tripped over with some of that thing. But we are approaching, as we get into this series, this famous prayer of Jesus, not as a creed, not as a written prayer to, write, to recite in a group, but we're actually looking at what are the different ingredients of the Lord's Prayer teach us about how to pray? What do the different ingredients teach us about the sort of things we can pray about? What can we learn about developing our prayer lives? What can we learn about developing this, this prayer relationship with God? As I said, this coincides with our Acts Global Church's 21 days of prayer and fasting. We're actually part of a much larger movement called Acts Global Churches. And the idea is that all of us would find something significant that we could abstain for over the first 21 days of August. Something to give up something to sacrifice, something to switch out and switch God in so that we can connect with him instead in prayer. Acts Global Churches all around Australia are doing this and it is so good to be part of something so much bigger. You know, some people are fasting from food. Some people are fasting from coffee. Some people are fasting from social media. There's a whole heap of things that people can fast from. Over the last few weeks, we've given out this handout, this, um, this prayer guide to get involved. And if you want one of these, um, and if you're on the live stream and you're not able to get into church, get onto our Riverland Central uh, Church website, www.riverlandcentral.org.au. You can download this handout from there. And this talks about a whole heap of things that we can be doing day by day to connect in with God. And as Joella said earlier, the first one is we can pray for nationwide revival. We can choose to believe for miracles. And I just wonder, could we stand now and could the people in this room, could the people in the overflow room, could the people on the live stream start to pray for nationwide revival? 
Could we start to say, God, stir something up in me? Lord, I know that I've been coasting with you. I know, God, that Australia has been coasting with you. Lord, I, I know that I need something from you. If this nation needs revival, it actually needs to start with me. It needs to start with you. So will you start to call out to God? Will you start to say, God, here I am, and I'm asking for the nation. I'm asking that Australia would be part of your kingdom, God. That people around Australia would start to switch on to you. That people around Australia would start to say yes to Jesus. They'd start to say yes to grace. They'd start to say yes to forgiveness. They'd start to say yes to righteousness. They'd start to say yes to goodness. Lord God, we pray together now that you would start to light fires around Australia. And we're not talking about bushfires. We're not talking about arson. We're talking about spot fires of the Holy Spirit where people start to say yes to you, Jesus. Where people start to say yes to your goodness and your grace and your mercy. We ask for that today. Soften our hearts to you, we pray, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And if you agree with me, just turn to the person near you and say, I agree. Amen. I agree. Amen. Okay, you may take your seats. You may take your seats. So that's what we're going to be doing over the next 21 days. And if, if you can, get hold of one of these handouts and, and join with us in what we're doing. Join with us in what we're doing. Now, the Lord's Prayer, of course, comes in Matthew 6. But let's not forget, and how easy is it to forget when we read things in the Bible, that the Lord's Prayer is actually part of a much longer conversation. It's part of a much longer discourse that Jesus has with people. You see, it comes in the Bible soon after he begins his public ministry. He's about 30. So anyone in this room close to 30? Yep. God bless you. Jesus started his public ministry when he was your age. Gail, you know lies make baby Jesus cry, right? Okay. So it starts when he begins his, his public ministry. He's, he's come back from his trial in the wilderness. His, his cousin John has gone to prison. And then Jesus starts to call his first disciples. He starts to call Simon Peter. He calls Matthew, uh, Andrew to himself. sorry. And then these large crowds just start to gather to Jesus. He's like the celebrity of the day. Um, and this is prompted by him turning up in synagogues, you know, churches around Galilee, and he preaches about this coming kingdom of God. He, he starts healing sick people when he prays for them. He starts healing diseased people. You know, there's this massive paradigm shift starting to happen in, in Israel. And then Jesus goes up onto this mountain. I think he's probably getting sick of all these people around here. But the, the people follow him up there. They follow him up onto this mountain. And then his disciples come close to him. And so what he starts to do is he simply starts to speak with them. He starts to teach. He starts to tell them things. And he gives them all these amazing new practical understandings of the law, the, the, the moral and the spiritual co codes that Israel is governed by. He suddenly gives them these amazing insights that they've never received before. He teaches them about how to have good relationships. He, he teaches them about cheating in relationships. He, he teaches them about murder and revenge and generosity and forgiveness. He, he's covering big ticket items. And then just before he gets to what we call the Lord's Prayer, he actually talks about prayer. And he talks about how to do it. But he also talks about how not to do it. And this is where we're going today. This is where we're going today. So even though our series is called the Lord's Prayer, we're not even going to get there today. We're going to look at the context. We're going to look at what does it mean to actually pray. Matthew chapter 6, we're going to read from verse 5, and we're reading from the NIV. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Who know that churches are full of hypocrites? I always say, you know, when people tell me churches are full of hypocrites, I say, no, there's not. There's room for heaps more of us. <laughs> they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, 
who sees what's done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, don't keep babbling on like the pagans, for they think that they'll be heard because of their many words. Don't be like them, for your Father knows what you need, even before you ask him. So there's three things that we're going to bring out of this, three keys for prayer that we're going to bring as we start our 21 days of prayer and fasting and as we start this series. And here's the first one. When, not if. When, not if. Do you see there, Jesus repeats this phrase in verses 5 and 7. He says, and when you pray. And when you pray. He's repeating this You see, Jesus assumes that people who follow him pray. Jesus assumes that it's part of the natural activities of their day. He he assumes that they already pray, and he's teaching them how to do it properly. I don't know about you, but this idea that people regularly pray, that's a huge challenge to those of us in modern-day Australia. We, We live in a profoundly secular country. Outside of church meetings, we we rarely see or read or hear about examples of people praying. I can't ever remember a news story where it was mentioned that an individual was praying and then something happened. It's just not part of people's common everyday lives outside of church. Have you ever seen an uh, Instagram influencer who's not a church leader talking about prayer and talking about a prayer time that they had and how awesome it was. It rarely happens. It rarely happens. And yet, we're to be called people of prayer. We're to be called people of prayer. We often say that prayer is talking with God, you know. God wants relationship with us. Can you imagine what a relationship would be like if there was no talking? Some of you are looking at your spouse right now and saying, actually, that would be a bit of an improvement. (laughs) But can you honestly imagine what it would be like? Um, When I first moved out of the Riverland and went down to Adelaide, um, I got set up in a share house with uh, another woman. It was a platonic relationship. It wasn't a a romantic thing or anything like that. But but I lived with this other young woman. I was about 17, 18, I think. And um, we were good friends before we moved into this share house. Who knows that when you move into a house with somebody, you see a side of them that you've never seen before. So I lived with this woman for a year, and I I would have said that we were really close friends before we moved in. But do you know what I discovered? I discovered that she was really sulky. I discovered that days would go by and she wouldn't even talk to me. Days would go by when she uh, wouldn't look at me, when she would say, how was your day? When she got home from her TAFE course, "Uh." And then she just wouldn't talk. She'd go into her room and slam the door. We would sit there in the lounge room in perfect silence, eating dinner together. It was a relationship where talking just didn't happen. And guess what happened there? That house fell apart. That share house fell apart within a year because there was just no talking. If there's no communication, if there's no relationship, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. So... My hope for you is that through the month of August, you'll be able to increase in both your frequency and in the depth of your prayer life. You know, because as Emma said earlier, you know, God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He doesn't change. What changes is us. God is always speaking. God is always pouring out his words on us. The issue is whether we actually learn to listen to him. So through August, let's together grow in our prayer lives, shall we? It grow in our connection with God. And here's the second thing. We need to pray to get divine connection, not public recognition. Pray to get divine connection, not public recognition. Look at what Jesus says there in that first passage. He says, When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, pray to your father who's unseen. Then your father who sees what's done in secret will reward you. So who were these hypocrites that Jesus was talking about? Who were these these people who he was so scathing about? Well, these were religious people. These were people who would stand in public 
praying loudly and conspicuously, hoping that others would notice them and would see how godly they are. They were people who hoped they could get respect and status through the act of their praying. Radically different to in secular Australia today. If you did that on a street corner today, you'd probably get locked up. But can I suggest that these people probably weren't praying at all? Well, their focus certainly wasn't on God. Their, their focus was on themselves and on the people around them. Look what I'm doing. How awesome am I? I've heard some people say, oh, you know, this verse means that we probably shouldn't pray together in public. This verse means that, oh, look, I don't really want to lead prayer in church together because that might make me a hypocrite, you know, and Jesus wants me to pray on my own at home. Prayer is a private thing. Do you know, this is a misunderstanding of the point that Jesus is actually making. He's saying that prayer is communication with God. It's about divine connection with him. It's not about performance. I mean, think about it. If we believe that God is the creator, he's the one who created the heavens and the earth, he created every star, he created every mountain, he created every elephant, he created every whale. I mean, God is bigger and stronger and more powerful than we can possibly imagine. What are we? The Bible tells us over and over again that we are dust. Turn to the person near you and say, dust. You are dust. <laughs> I swept you up in my vacuum cleaner the other day. You are dust. It says that we're made from dust and to dust we return. Yeah, beautiful dust. Uh, Joella tells me that she refuses to dust in our house because she might sweep up someone she knows. <laughs> We are made from dust, and to dust we return. And yet we dust people, we get caught up, so caught up in our own importance when we pray, don't we? Look at how good I pray. God, you're actually lucky to hear from me today. This activity, prayer, is such a privilege. I mean, to have the ear of the infinite creator, the infinite creator of the heavens and the earth, and yet when we do it, we focus on ourselves and the people around us. How stupid is that? That's crazy. And I want to say, if you're intimidated when you hear other people pray, when you hear other people pray and you think, oh, they're praying really good, you've actually missed the point. If you look at other people and say, oh, they're using a good phrase when they pray, maybe I need to try. You've missed the point. Don't let other people's confident and wordy sounding prayers intimidate you, for goodness sake. We've got to focus on connection with God, not on any sense of superiority or inferiority. We need to not focus on public recognition for prayer. This is about connecting with our Heavenly Father. And here's the third thing. Pray short and heartfelt prayers. Jesus said, when you pray, don't keep on babbling like the pagans. For they'll be heard because of their for they think they'll be heard because of their many words. Don't be like them. For your father knows what you need before you ask him. Have you ever seen a Tibetan prayer wheel? Have you ever seen one of those things? What it is, it's a it's a it's a wheel um, on a spindle, like on an axle. And it's made of leather or wood or metal, and the whole thing's usually held together with cotton. Now, the reason I'm telling you about this, Tibetan monks, Tibetan Buddhist monks, they, they would write their prayers on the wheel, okay? And so what they would do is they spin them. They spin the wheel, and they figure out it's kind of like praying, right? Because the words go round and round. So they'll spin the, the wheel to make the prayer happen. And their theory is the more the wheel spins, the greater the spiritual power that comes because there's more prayers happening. But who knows, you can, you can only do that for so long because after a while your arms get tired. If you go to Tibet, what you see around the place are these prayer wheels set up in the environment spinning on their own. So they'll put them in a windy place and they'll, they'll set up sort of sails on them and things. So they'll, they'll spin around and make the prayers happen in the wind or they'll put them in a creek 
and the water will go by, you know, and they'll, they'll make the prayer spin because the more prayers, the greater the power, so the theory goes. Today, you can even see them. They're set up um, with electricity and they'll make them go round, you know, <laughs> using electrical power for, for, to make spiritual power. Now, I'm not saying this to ridicule Buddhists and I want to be clear about this. I'm not saying this to, to ridicule someone else's tradition. I'm saying this to say God is not at all impressed with our mechanics of our prayer or with the length of our prayer. I want to be really clear about that. God is not all, at all impressed. You know, I'm pretty sure that when we get to heaven, or even now, sitting up in heaven, God doesn't have a leaderboard of the 10 best prayers. Okay? You know, it's not, oh, who's been the longest prayer today? We'll just change the board around. He doesn't have that. He probably doesn't even have one for the top 100, I think. You see, God doesn't care about the length of your prayers. He doesn't care about how wordy or how erudite they are. He doesn't care whether you say, Lord God, thank you, Jesus, Lord God. Bless this place, Lord God, Lord God. Like, you know, when people use the Lord God as a comma in their prayer. He doesn't care about how much of that you do. He doesn't care how loud you shout. He doesn't care whether the words you use are clever. And he doesn't even care whether you're using phrases that you've borrowed from the favorite church that you follow on YouTube. He doesn't. He doesn't care about any of that stuff. What God cares about is that you earnestly seek him. What God cares about is that you come to him because you want him to be your God. Because you want him to be your savior. Because you want him to be your king. That's what God cares about. In prayer, God's attracted to the quality of your heart. He's not attracted to the quantity of your words. So, pray short. Pray heartfelt. Keep it simple. Don't use Christian jargon. Don't babble on and on like the pagans do. Simple, heartfelt and real when we pray. And pray knowing that we have a God who hears us. We have a God who loves us and hears us. Can I ask the band to come? So as we embark on this adventure today, we're taking a deep dive into the Lord's Prayer, coinciding with this 21 days of prayer and fasting. And I want to simply ask you today, won't you make a decision today that yes, through this month of August, through this, this prayer series that we're doing, I'm going to grow in my prayer life. I'm going to grow in my communication and my connection with God. I'm going to not worry about whether I feel intimidated by this idea of prayer. I'm not going to worry about whether I feel like I've got my theology all squared away. I'm just going to start to grow. If that's you this morning, if you say, yes, I want to grow in my prayer life over this next series, I want you to stand with me. You know, we can, we can say amen and agree, or we can stand and agree. So as we stand, and I don't know where you're up to, you might not even know Jesus. If you're on the live stream, you're in this room, you might not even know Jesus. You might say, well, I'm not following him. That's okay. You can grow in your prayer life anyway. If you want to do that today, right in your home where you are now, in the overflow rooms, here in this room, stand with me. And we're going to pray together and we're going to commit ourselves to growing in our prayer lives today. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, you're starting to move. Lord God, together we agree that prayer is important. Together we, we agree that, you know, when we come to you, this is so much not about who we are. This is not about us making ourselves look good by any means. This is about you, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who, who created everything that we see. But we dust people get to pray. We dust people get to come and we have the ear of the creator of the heavens and the earth. 
So we thank you for that, God. Together we agree that prayer is important. Together we agree that we're going to grow in prayer. We agree, God, to focus, that we're going to focus on connecting with you. We're not going to focus on our own performance. We're not going to focus on whether we get the words right. We're not going to focus on whether I can pray as good as that other person over there. This is about simple and heartfelt prayers to the King of the universe. Lord, we're going to learn to talk with you like we talk with each other. We're going to learn to pray to you using the kind of words we pray. We speak to each other. It's our commitment, God, as we go through this series. It's our commitment as we go through this 21 days of prayer and fasting. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's just start. Stand in God's presence for a little longer. If, Carl, if you can just, or not Carl, Emma, if you can lead us. Christ is enough. Just the chorus. Just the chorus. That would be great. Just Let's remind ourselves that prayer is not about performance. It's about Jesus. Because Christ is enough. given up everything to follow you what will we get you know as if following Jesus wasn't enough what will we get what are, what are you going to give us for following you Jesus and he replied Jesus replied I assure you that when the world is made new and the son of man sits upon his glorious throne you who have been my followers will also sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel and everyone who has given up houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or property for my sake will receive a hundred times as much in return and will inherit eternal life How's that for an investment? How's that for an investment? But many of the greatest now will be least important then and those who seem least important now will be the greatest then. You know, this morning as we close, there's an opportunity to uh, give of our tithes and offerings. And you might like to give. <laughs> you might be thinking, well, I could give a sister. Um, you, you may, we, we, don't, we don't take... <laughs> We don't take sisters and brothers as the offering, but you know. But you might be thinking, well, you know, I, I've given up lots to follow you, Jesus. What am I going to get? There's the reminder. There's going to be so much. There's going to be so much. You know, this morning as we give of our tithes and offerings, we can we can count on the fact that Jesus is going to pour out on us. He's going to bless us, and uh, you know, he he knows that we are people who like to receive. It's better to uh, to give than receive, he says, but we like to receive and it's best to receive from him. So let's this morning be generous in our words with each other. Let's be generous in the way that we give of our tithes and offerings. Let's be generous in the way that we share what we have with our neighbours. Let's be generous 
in all that we do, knowing that Jesus is generous with us and the rewards are huge and um, much bigger than what we give. So uh, let's give this morning to to the Lord. Let's give and uh, let's love Him. You can give with the numbers that are on the live stream, uh, on, the, on the screen, or uh, we do have our giving stations for those few of you who are here today. That would be uh, lovely. You can give by that means too. Lord God, bless us as we go. We thank you for a wonderful morning. We thank you that you love us. We thank you that we can just come to you with our simple words. And we thank you, God, that you're good all of the time. I ask your blessing on us, Lord, as we go about our weeks and our days. Lord, as we fast and as we seek you, uh, I pray that you would uh, reward us with finding you. Your word tells us that we've got to believe that you reward those who earnestly seek you. And so that's part of what faith is. And we just look to you now, Lord, and say thank you for that reward we know is coming. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Adios, those of you on the uh, home, have a great week. Give us a ring, say good day. Give somebody else a ring, say good day. Check in how they're doing. For those of you who are here, you're welcome to stay. Cake and coffee out those doors there and keep going. Please keep your masks on, except when you're eating and drinking, you can take them off outside. Alpha will be starting in this room at 12.30. Lunch will be part of that. So if you're keen to even just check out the first week and see what it's all about, you're welcome to do that. God bless you, everybody.